On this edition of MSHA News, you're going to hear from a bulldozer operator who found himself sucked into a void on a feeder draw hole of a raw coal stockpile. Because of the safety features his company installed after a previous accident, Roger is alive to tell us his story. The piles were way up big and was probably somewhere in the area of about uh, 15 to 20 foot from the top of the truck dump where the trucks were, they were coming in and, and dumping and uh, the feeders uh, weren't opening. One of them opened, number three feeder opened. So I was basically taking the coal from uh, the, what the trucks were dumping and pushing it to the number three feeder and more or less trying to keep the truck drivers happy, keep them hot moving and, and keep a little bit of coal coming to the plant. And I'd clean away from, clean as much as I could away from the wall and then I'd go back at digging at the number four feeder trying to open it up. Really there was more coal coming in than I could get rid of them in one feeder. So it piled up on me pretty good. So I started cutting towards, you know, cutting the pile away from the wall again towards the number three feeder because it was getting in my way of digging out the number four. And the number four feeder had rat holed out and I was I just had pushed up to the number three feeder and went to reverse and when I started to move backwards a big cloud of dust started rolling and the dozer turned to the side went into the feeder on its side. I guess the blade or whatever something turned to let the dozer turn back around to where it was just sitting on its tail like that. And after the dust cleared I had about maybe two foot of window that I could still see out of. And when I looked out, it was like I was in a jug. Everything was just over top of the dozer and I was looking out through a hole. So I just figured, you know, I just stayed, you know, stayed where I was at. And I started hollering at the control room operator and told him to shut the feeders off on the FM radio. I grabbed hold of the seat and pulled it forward as far as I could get it. I turned around backwards, put my back up against the window and pulled the pin on the, the self-rescuer door, dropped it out, got it. I'd shut the dozer off, other than I left the, the air conditioning fan running. So if, you know, if there was any air around the machine, you know, I could uh, draw off of it rather than just worrying about the rescuer. Um, and basically, you know, just, just sit there. I think they said I was in there for like an hour and 45 minutes. Uh, I was in my office and was informed by the plant foreman. Uh, we immediately got in a pickup truck and came to the stockpile on top where we could see what was going on. We got to the top and looked down. We could see the void in the, in, in the pile and we could see the blade of the dozer about five or six feet below the surface of the coal. We were able to communicate with the, uh, with the operator. We could talk to him and uh, he told us he was okay. Uh, he could see light uh, and we told him what we were going to do. We, were, we called the loadout and got two more dozers up to the pile and we immediately began moving the coal away from him and when we started moving the coal away the pile started breaking and, and it covered the dozer at that time to where he couldn't see. So he, uh, he had his self-rescuer out and had it ready Nothing really fell in until I could feel the other dozer. He'd, he'd come in on the, start coming in on the pile. And when he did it, uh, everything jarred loose, and it finally it covered the dozer up. Almost positive that I could keep what was going to come through that window out. You know, and if I stayed where I was at, that the cab of the dozer wasn't going to fill up with coal. When I, I first went in, I still had about about that much window. And as this things progressed, the, the window was getting slowly but surely covered up. And then finally it was, uh, the window covered up and then I felt the, the pile give and you feel the dozer move. It was just kind of a thud. And then I knew that the rest of the pile would come in on top of it. With communication, I could talk Roger all the time while I was climbing on the pile. By the time I got to the 
where he was at to the top. Then I, I was above him, so I could look down and see the blade and part of the cab. And then I talked to him, and I she started digging him out. The man 